Hello everyone, welcome to another hands-on engineering tutorial. In this lab, we're going to be going over push buttons and how we can debounce their signals. Push buttons are a fun way of adding extra interactivity into our Arduino projects. They're very simple. Essentially, by pressing down this button, we create a connection between two pins that are underneath the push button. By connecting one of the pins to a digital pin on the Arduino and the other pin to ground, we can measure the voltage on the digital pin and from that determine whether or not the button is pressed down. We've set this pin to be input pull up, which means that it'll either be 5 volts when the button is not pressed or 0 volts when the button is pressed. We have an LED here to demonstrate when this push button is pressed down. We have code set up so that it toggles whenever this button is pressed down. The circuit is very simple. We have a connection from D4 on the Arduino to the 1K ohm resistor. The other end of that 1K ohm resistor is connected to the LED, and the other end of that LED is connected to ground. However, there is a problem. Watch. When I press the push button, it doesn't really respond like it should. The LED will flicker or not respond when I press at all. Sometimes it does work, but it usually doesn't and therefore this isn't really usable because it's so unresponsive. This is because the program we wrote doesn't take into account the fact that buttons will bounce when you press them. Take a look at the diagram on the screen. This is a visual representation of what the button might be doing. Sometimes the button won't make great contact between the pins and the signal will stutter between there being a connection and there not being a connection. Thus, the voltage at the digital pin will flop back and forth between 0 volts and 5 volts. This is a problem, because then the Arduino thinks that we press the button multiple times when we only really pressed it once. There are multiple ways of solving this problem, including both hardware and software methods. In this lab, we're going to be going over how to debounce the signal using software. Let's go over the code so that we can actually debounce the signal. This is the code we're going to be using to handle the button pushes and to bounce them. We begin our code with two constant integers, button pin and LED pin. Button pin is set equal to two because we connected the button's output to digital pin two on the Arduino. LED pin is equal to four because the LED circuit is connected to digital pin four. After that, we have a long unsigned integer, previous time, which we set equal to zero. Previous time is going to be set equal to the current time whenever the push button is seen low. This means that previous time is going to be continuously updated whenever the push button is pushed. This is going to be used so that we can keep track of when the push button is being held down and also when it's generating a noisy signal. If the amount of time that's passed since our current iteration through the loop is less than some threshold time, then we'll determine that the push button is either being held down or some noisy signal is what's being generated. We'll go into that in more detail when we actually get to loop. Inside of setup, we run pin mode on button pin and set it equal to input pull up. That means that the button pin is going to be connected to a pull up resistor. Thus, when no current is allowed to flow through the system because there's no path to the ground, the digital pin at button pin will see five volts. When there is a path to ground, the digital pin will be grounded, so zero volts. This will create our two states, so we know whether or not the button is pressed down. We also run pin mode on LED pin and set it to an output, because we either want to power the circuit or write zero volts to it, so it's an output. Inside of loop, we run if of digital read of button pin is low. So basically we're checking if the push button is pressed down. If it is, then we have a long unsigned integer current time, which we set equal to millis. This is going to tell us the current time, or the amount of time that the Arduino has been running. We're going to check if the current time, minus the previous time, is greater than 10. Essentially, we want to see that if this time that we're checking that the push button is pressed down, is 10 milliseconds later than the previous time that we saw it was pushed down. No human being would be able to press down a button that fast and expect good results from the Arduino. So we're saying that about 10 milliseconds is the boundary between noise and human pressing. This value may vary depending on your application. You might need to increase it, and you might even be able to decrease it. We found that 10 was a good value to make sure that our signal doesn't have much noise, while also still feeling good to the user's touch no matter how fast they pressed it. 
If this if statement is true, then we're going to use digital write on LED pin, and we're going to write to it the opposite of digital read on LED pin. This is going to make sure that we toggle the current state of the LED. If it was on, it becomes off. If it was off, then it'll become on. Then regardless of whether or not the previous if statement was qualified, as long as digital read of button pin was low, then we're going to set previous time equal to current time. Thus, whenever our digital read is low, we're going to continuously set previous time equal to current time, so any noise and holding down of the button will simply be disregarded and we won't toggle the LED. Now let's go see what this code looks like in action. So when I press the push button, the LED toggles. It doesn't flicker or fluctuate or not respond to any of my presses. It seems to be working correctly even when I press it quickly. This is much better than it was before and would actually feel good if you implemented it into a system. All right, everyone, that's it for this lab. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new about how to use push buttons in your circuits. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel. Feel free to leave recommendations for future videos or things we can show in our videos in the comments below. That's it for Hands-On Engineering. See you next time.